Hey all, Brie from the No Guilt Mom podcast, and I have got a gift for you this holiday season. If you love the No Guilt Mom podcast, and I mean love the No Guilt Mom podcast, then tell us about it. Leave us a review and you can be entered to win a No Guilt Mom gift card. All you have to do is leave a review, take a screenshot, and then simply go to noguiltmom.com forward slash review to enter our giveaway for a free No Guilt Mom gift card. Simply for telling us what you think about the podcast. It is amazing. But don't delay. Get right on this as we're going to be giving away that No Guilt Mom gift card on December 21st. So get right on over and visit noguiltmom.com forward slash review. Welcome to the No Guilt Mom podcast. I am your host, Joanne Crone, joined here by my fantastic and amazing co-host, Bree Ducker. <sighs> hello, hello, everybody. <laughs> You're the next contestant on the No Guilt Mom podcast. Oh, man, I was going to go with The Price is Right. The, that's what bring, I was thinking. Bringing back like, my childhood. But I'm like, has to bring it back to the podcast. Did, was anybody else like a TV? Wa- like, okay, so my parents worked and I would watch TV mm-hmm. over summer break. So every morning oh, yeah. it was watching like The Price is Right, the Brady Bunch reruns, all that jazz. I watched all my children. Oh, really? Yes, I did. I was a Days a of Our Lives gal. That's what but, my mom watched. But I was so frustrated with all my children because they would keep repeating repeating the same story over and over again each day like the story never progressed and really I, well yeah and you could like guess why because they had to do like daily recordings of this soap opera and i'm sure like if the story progressed too fast they'd be like well what do i write about now so was the story always about the evil twin brother who came back to life and oh, stole the life the of evil the other twin brother right. yep. yeah See? Mm-hmm. they always had that when I was in college, do you remember a show called Passions? That yes, was out I for a little totally while. watched Passions. Oh, I loved Passions. I can't even remember who was on Passions. There was this cute kid. And then another one is on uh, the story, um, This Is Us. Oh, who is it? Who is that? Oh, the cute Bond brother. I have, oh my gosh. The same guy who's in Bad Mom's Christmas, Kevin? Yes. It was Kevin. Yes. Okay, I cannot remember the actor's name right he now. Was, uh, he did not play a, a so great guy on Passions, but yeah. he was... Nice to look at. <laughs> Passion. That's so funny. I don't like, I don't even watch soap operas now, but you know what? It was All My Children. Kelly Ripa used to be on All My Children. That was like her. I remember hearing about that. Her and era. you know, it's funny. I don't think our kids will ever have the soap opera thing because there's not, there's, are, are they still Netflix? on? I, I don't know. Are they still on? I don't think so. That's weird. I know. That's so weird. Oh, so many things of our childhood have gone by the wayside. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you know, Something exciting that's happening right now. Yes. We're in week three of Common Happy Parenting with our students. Yes, I am so excited. That has been, I have to admit, it was one of those things where I was a little nervous when you had proposed doing this. I mean, I loved the concept. I was just worried about the time to do things. Joanne has to push Bree. Bree is the <laughs> cautious one, am I not? No, well, I mean. Well, we're both cautious, but I mean, like, you really have to push me. Yeah, I mean, it's a good thing, though, because you you keep me grounded so that, like, I can't go too far out, like, in, like, La La Land, I guess. Like, oh. it's actually a very common business relationship, and it works really well. Because, yeah. like, I've noticed this, actually, working with you, because I never used to think I was visionary. But now, like, I see, like, I come up with all of these ideas, and I see your face, and I'm like... I might be a little visionary. <laughs> <laughs> and Brie looks terrified over there in her chair going, uh, 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 okay. No, like <laughs> it's completely normal. I've seen it in other businesses too. And it works together because yes. like I, I take the big ideas and you're like, so what, what will really happen? <laughs> What could we really make happen? But so it's like push and then like, yes, like keep it grounded and make it like actual reality. Yes. Like it has been go, go, go ever since I joined No Guilt Mom full time back in August. It has been crazy. We're but, fast, but Calm but, and Happy Parenting is we're going I on know, now. And- I've been so ex- like I was so nervous about it, but I have been so excited. It's been so amazing. And this week we are going to be talking about, let's see, what is this week? It is process your own emotions. It's okay. the P, the second P. No. The first, first P, P and happy. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, because uh, we do the happy framework. So the first week we did have priorities. The second one was appreciate your kid's point of view. And now we're on the first P, which is process your own emotions, which actually goes very, very well with this 
episode. Yes. Because our week three is all about setting those boundaries with your family and like communicating what you like in a way without blame, without resentment, but your p- kids like and your family actually respect you and listen. And this episode actually was inspired by another podcast episode we had, episode 54 with Kara Harvey. Yep. And that was about how to go from overwhelmed and in control. But she had this lovely little golden nugget about the stop and drop. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about the stop and drop on this the episode, The stop and people. drop is today. So we hope you, you enjoy today's episode. Hey all, Brie here, and I wanted to share one of my favorite gifts to give during the holiday season, a StoryWorth book. It is the most amazing gift ever. StoryWorth is an online service that lets you create a special and unique gift of someone's story. I've given StoryWorth books to both of my parents, and it has been their favorite gift, hands down. And did I mention, it is so easy. StoryWorth emailed my parents questions every week that I handpicked from their massive list of questions that they have. All my parents had to do was open their email and answer them. That easy. I asked my dad questions like, did you have any rules that you set for yourself as a parent, which you immediately broke? And he did. I even asked both of my parents, are you more like your mom or your dad? And they shared a lot of really amazing qualities that I didn't know about my grandparents at the time. Then at the end of the year, StoryWorth compiles all of their answers, puts them into this gorgeous book that covers everything. My parents love showing us their books and I personally love getting a chance to read them. With StoryWorth, I am giving those I love, a thoughtful and personal gift from the heart that preserves their memories and stories for years to come. Go to storyworth.com slash NGM and save $10 on your first purchase. That's storyworth.com slash NGM to save $10 on your first purchase. This message is sponsored by Greenlight. It is so hard to raise kids who know how to manage money. Brie, right now, my kids are all about earning money for presents. My daughter wants to get presents for all of her friends, and my son is doing a secret Santa with his friends. Oh, I hear you. And if you're looking to raise kids that are financially responsible, we have got a lifesaver recommendation for you that you need to check out. It is Greenlight. Greenlight is a debit card and money app made for families that gives kids and teens an easy and fun way to gain financial literacy all while giving parents peace of mind. You can send instant money transfers, automate allowance, and even keep an eye on kids' spending with real-time notifications. Meanwhile, your kids can begin their journey towards financial autonomy by learning how to save, invest, and spend wisely. So sign up for Greenlight today and get your first month free when you go to greenlight.com slash NGM. That's greenlight.com slash NGM to try Greenlight for free. Greenlight.com slash NGM. If you are overwhelmed by your kids' huge emotions and you wish you had a way to teach them how to first recognize their own feelings and then how to communicate those to others, you are going to want Emotions 911. It is on sale Wednesday, May 12th and Thursday, May 13th. And you can get all the info at noguiltmom.com backslash emotions 911. You want mom life to be easier. That's our goal too. Our mission is to raise more self-sufficient and independent kids, and we're going to have fun doing it. We're going to help you delegate and step back. Each episode, we'll tackle strategies for positive discipline, making our kids more responsible and making our lives better in the process. Welcome to the No Guilt Mom Podcast. So, stop and drop. Do you do the stop and drop, Brie? Um, My kids like me to do the stop and drop. And I will admit, I was doing the stop and drop Mm -hmm. quite a bit. And we wonder why Brie's always late to everything and can never feel like she ever has anything done. Yep. So like the stop and drop for people who haven't heard this term before, and it was first mentioned in episode 54 that we had with Kara Harvey. It is when your kids ask you for something, you stop what you're doing, drop it all, drop it all and do what they need. Yes. And her example was a great one. Like her son came down and was like, hey, Kara, I'm out of deodorant. Can you go to the store and get me some? Mm -hmm. And she's like... First of all, uh, don't call me Kara. Not- <laughs> <Okay. laughs> it was her stepson. I can yeah. get that. So anyways, he was like, I need deodorant. Can you go to the store and get me some? And she's like, well, I can go on Thursday because I have time on Thursday. And he's like, well, yeah, but I'm out now. Mm-hmm. 
And she was frustrated by this request until she realized that that was the kind of thing that she always had done. Mm -hmm. They needed something. Oh, God, you're out of deodorant. Okay, fine. Yeah, I'm really busy, but maybe I can swing by on my way to work Mm -hmm. or my way after, you know, and you kind of set that expectation for your kids. And I think a lot of us do that. Oh, yeah. It happens a lot with school projects. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I have this science project due by tomorrow and I don't have markers or a poster board or anything. Can you go get it for me? And immediately we're like, it's a school project. But also, the second thing we think is, wait, how long have you known about this school project? And why haven't we done this sooner? Right. And the whole time you're running off and you're getting the stuff. And if you're like me, I make sure my kids come along with me because I'm like, if I have to suffer, you have to suffer with me. Oh, yeah, definitely. So we go together. And the whole time I am like just beating on the dead horse of like, how long did you know about this project? This is ridiculous. We shouldn't be doing this. Blah, 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 blah makes me feel like crap, makes my kid feel like crap. And then we're all both in a bad mood while they're trying to work on the project. So it doesn't really help anybody. It's pretty unproductive. And it puts everybody in a crappy mood. Yeah. And it's like, it's something that we feel like we have to do as parents where we're we're here to tell you, you don't have to do the stop and drop. No, you no. do not. So like, why do you think like the stop and drop happens? Like, let's look at the things behind why we're doing this. Well, I think that the stop and drop happens a lot because of the fact that we done it before. And especially when they come in with those things of like, it's school related. Yeah. Or it's something that we see as an utter necessity and we have to keep from that failure happening Mm -hmm. of it not occurring. So like the big failure that would happen if whatever it is that they missed didn't happen. We don't want that to happen. So we're going to stop what we do so that we could take care of it. Yeah. And talk it in circles, though. Well, well, we get into that fear cycle. Yes. We get into the fear cycle, which is like our favorite fear cycle ever, because I'm like, oh, my gosh, if they don't have this project, they're going to get an F on their science project. And and then then they're going to fail science project. And and then then this is going to go into high school. And and then then they won't get into college. And and then then they'll end up in a van down by the river. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. And that's how we're thinking when we do this stop and drop. We're taking this one isolated incident and thinking about way in the future. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you know what's awful is that, and again, in my case, and I think that, you know, by all means, everybody out there in podcast land, send us some feedback. Let us know if this is you too. I feel like how, you know, gosh, darn it. I'm going to make them know that they weren't planning ahead. Yeah. Like, again, like I talked about, like, if I'm going to the store to get something last minute, I'm going to be like harping on them the whole time. And I say it like I do it all the time. I am actually much better about not doing this, especially once Kara brought it up in the episode, because I totally realized it is all about me Mm -hmm. and my own boundaries. Well, yeah, it is about boundaries. And it's so funny. It's funny that you mentioned like you're going to make sure that they know that they are not planning ahead. Like we've talked about in previous episodes, and we've talked about this in lesson one when we did it with Calm and Happy Parenting, is that... It's like that nagging and reminding and putting that Band-Aid on the bullet hole. Right. So like if you haven't heard the phrase Band-Aid on a bullet hole, it's exactly what it sounds like. The metaphor is really descriptive. But say that this constantly asking you questions and having you stop everything and drop everything, that's like the bullet hole, like leaving things to the last minute. That's mm-hmm. the that's the wound, leaving things to the last minute. And we try to like put a little band-aid on that big wound by telling them when we take them to get something. Oh my gosh, why didn't you plan ahead? Oh my gosh, why didn't you do this? Why didn't oh, you do that? And, try and my make favorite, them my favorite Hall of Famer. <laughs> this is the last time. This is the last time. And then it happens again and again and again. Exactly. So it's like we put that band-aid and they're all contrite and they're sorry. They're like, sorry, thank you. And then it happens again. Exactly. Because that bullet hole is still there. It has not been stitched up. And uh, we want to stitch that up. We want to stop the stop and drop. Right. And it's this never ending cycle, like you just said, because we set the precedence Mm -hmm. by stopping and dropping. Oh, yeah. It's so interesting because like, so this podcast has had such an effect on me and just doing this work because it causes you to like investigate your own parenting and Mm -hmm. what you could do better. And what I contributed to. Yeah. And what you contribute to. So this stop and drop concept uh, came up last week for me where my daughter, her ballet class, she got the big news that, oh my gosh, we're going into point, which is a whole other thing, but it's very exciting. And she's like, mom, we need to go make an appointment to get my point shoes fitted. And I knew this was going to be like a stop and drop scenario if we didn't plan ahead. But then again, I also didn't want to be the one planning ahead because I'm like, this is something that she wants. Right. So even though she wanted to go immediately that day, 
mm-hmm. I put it back on her and I had her make the appointment at the dance store to get an appointment and get fitted at a time that was good for me and just planning ahead instead of like rearranging my whole schedule for this big exciting event to go take her right away it was that planning for the future right and that yeah. was good for a lot of things I mean I taught a lot of life skills in that situation the importance of calling to make appointments I don't know about you guys but I hate calling to make appointments but it's oh, a yeah. life skill we have to have I hate calling to make appointments too and you know what my daughter had never called to make an appointment before and she freaked out she was like I can't do that Probably like, took her like a day or two before she did. It huh? only took her a few hours, actually. <gasps> really? It did because I, I wasn't around. I wasn't around, thankfully, because if I was around and saw her, I would have coached her a little bit more than I did. But she was at dance. She had that hour break between dance. And I texted her. I'm like, OK, well, you know, call, make the appointment. Here's where I'm available. Just find a time. She's like, no. <laughs> and then I just didn't answer her texts. <laughs> That's the next thing. Sometimes you just got to like put up that that brick wall, man. Yeah. It is a wall of like, I can't answer. I can't answer. I can't Sometimes answer. I will take my phone and give it to Miguel. I'll be oh, like, here, really? just take it. That's a good one. Yeah. I can't. I can't be trusted. You can't answer. <laughs> and what happens usually when you don't answer? They Oh, well, <clears throat> one of my kids will be the whole mom, 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 mom. Mom, mom. <laughs> like, it, it comes with a million different spellings, text after text after text. It's mainly when she wants to Spotify. Oh, really? <laughs> the stop and drop on Spotify. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah. you need to stop the stop and drop on Spotify. <laughs> Lock her out. Lock her. <laughs> oh, I have, I have. And then I always go back. It's like a, uh. but anyways, but yeah, like it's, they just, it keeps trying. And then eventually stops. It eventually does stop, which mm-hmm. is the point we want to get to. Yeah. We're hitting that time of year where my brain gets so overloaded in December that I look for anything to make life easier. And I have to say, Brie, that Green Chef is one of those services. Yes. Green Chef is there to take away the dreaded, oh my goodness, what are we going to eat for dinner tonight? You can eat clean all holiday long with over 80 weekly meal options each week featuring things like quick and easy, protein packed, calorie smart, or my personal favorite, the keto options. And you don't have to lose track of healthy eating habits during the holidays because every Green Chef customer gets a free session with one of their registered dietitians who can walk you through how to make clean eating work for you, which is very cool. And I have to say that I have been loving their recipes lately. They put things together I have never thought of. This week, we're trying the lemon basil caper pork with sauteed cauliflower, bell peppers, almonds, and feta cheese, my favorite. Their recipes make it so easy to support my wellness goals without skipping on flavor. For Green Chef's best deal of the year, get $250 off with code NGM250 at greenchef.com slash NGM250. That's greenchef.com slash NGM250. And don't forget to use that code NGM250 to get $250 off. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. My son is playing a game right now on his computer where he's a thief and the cops are after him. So I'm so excited about this new app, Give As We Grow, where instead of being the quote unquote bad guys, kids are practicing giving back. That is so cool, Joanne. I really wish that there was something like this when my kids were younger that got them excited about giving back to others and helped them build a better understanding of what it really means to volunteer. Give As We Grow is the first of its kind free educational mobile app for children ages 8 to 11 that teaches kids via fun, service-focused mini game quests to tap into their unique talents and interests to help others. And did you know that studies show that there is a biological connection between generosity and happiness and that volunteering improves people's physical and mental health? I mean, kids who volunteer typically do better in school and are less likely to engage in risky behaviors. And that is something that I think we all want for our kids. Ready to spark a new movement in generosity? Find and download Give As We Grow for free in the App Store for Android and iOS. And for resources for the whole family, visit giveaswegrow.org. And it's funny because I keep rolling back to like every developmental stage with our kids. I always re- relate back to it's just toddlerhood with better vocabulary. It is. It is. You're just, just you're going through the same things. They're trying to figure out boundaries. They're trying to get what they want. They mm-hmm. just have a bigger vocabulary. They do. That makes it sometimes really, really hard to deal with because you're like, oh, they have a better vocabulary. So we can use some reasoning and logic here to get through to them. No, nope. no, you can't. No, nope. <laughs> because they're toddlers. So so the good news for all of this is 
you probably are doing the stop and drop, right? Yeah. And it's probably frustrating you a lot and your kids a little Mm -hmm. if you do the, you know, I'm going to make you feel my pain kind of thing that I like to do. But their pain is never as much as your pain when you're... (laughs) Yeah. No, because they know what to say. I'm sorry, mom. And then they give you a sad face and maybe you get a hug or a kiss and then we all move on and then they come back the very next day with something that's a last minute. Yep. So, but the good news is we have strategies on how to stop the stop and drop. Stop the stop and drop. Stop the stop and drop. That's a little bit of a tongue twister. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> stop the stop and drop. Stop, stop. Uh, anyways. <laughs> yeah. So the first thing is scheduling time in your calendar for those things that pop up. Now, see, that was like a mic drop type moment for mm-hmm. me when Kara was talking about that in episode 54, because she talked about how she schedules time for those things that pop up. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't really do that. I and I've been you know. doing that since, like, maybe not necessarily in my personal life, but like how you talked about, shared with people before, we do our planning the week ahead here mm-hmm. at No Guilt Mom. And I have learned that on Thursday and Friday, I always leave time. Yeah. And that's, I always make sure I have like at least an hour or two of blank stuff for the things that pop up. It's the buffer time. It's those places that you need that extra time that you can move things or take care of the things that pop up. Right. And it was funny because I want to say that she talked about like having a half hour in her schedule to do like that to run the errands mm-hmm. or whatever. And I was like, half an hour? That is, that, that's not even enough time for me to run to sprouts and get like fruit and come back. Like, yeah. no, I need way more time than that. I like to designate things for certain days of the week. So like groceries, okay. like our grocery trip is always done by my husband on Sundays. Any okay. groceries need to be told then and they're gotten then. And if you don't have your groceries in, you wait until the next week. At least my kids do. If I don't have my groceries and I run to fries. Because but, you have a car. <laughs> because I have a car. I can stop um, and drop for myself. That's I can fine. stop and drop for myself. <laughs> or like when they ask to go to Target, like my daughter will ask many times like, oh, I want to get this from Target. Can we go tonight? And always on a weeknight, my answer is no. We can't go tonight to Target. We can go on the weekend. Right. And I'm fine going on the weekend. But yeah, just having those boundaries and having those set times where I go to specific places. Usually everything's on the weekend. I typically do not do things on a weeknight just because of other things going on. Yeah. Yeah. I have found myself, uh, you know, in the last couple of weeks, because again, like that's been since this episode aired and and I had this epiphany Mm -hmm. from listening to that episode that, you know, we would be driving home and and it can get kind of tougher in my situation, I feel like, because of the fact that I'm divorced and I have my kids 50-50. So I only Mm -hmm. have them every other week. And I pick them up on Friday and it's not uncommon for me to pick them up on Friday and then need something like right then yeah, because they need it for school on Monday. Mm -hmm. And it's not an ideal situation that we live in, but you know, it is what it is and we work with it. But now like if they forget to ask me on Friday or Saturday and they bring it up Sunday night, yeah. My answer is, I'm really sorry, but no. Mm-hmm. You could have texted me during the week last week. You could have asked me on Friday or Saturday, but the answer is no at this point. You mm-hmm. have to learn to start planning ahead. And I remind them that like, you know, again, our situation is what it is. Whether or not your parents are married or not, like in our case, you can't just drop something on me on Sunday night and ask mm-hmm. for it by Tuesday. It just yeah. doesn't happen. No. And I've been saying no, and the requests have been less and less, and they've actually already been starting to think ahead. That's amazing. Been great. And we're talking about just a couple of weeks we've seen this change. So yeah. it's pretty nice. That's amazing. That leads us into the next one, to let your family know that there will be no more stop and drop happening. Oh, I didn't even realize I led into that one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Taking taking the time to tell your family that things are changing, that's not going to happen anymore. It's not going to be an option is helpful. Yep. Because when you start flat out with the, nope, my answer is no, you should have told me last week, you're going to get pushback. You are. But if you do it at a time where they're not asking for anything and you're just like, hey, so I just want to let you know something that's going to be changing when I have to stop everything I'm doing. It really stresses me out. So please let me know in advance if you need something because I will no longer just be stopping everything I'm doing to run and get something for you. Yeah. And I found another thing, too, that's helpful in our house. This is just something that I've I started doing like a long time ago. We have a target list on our fridge mm. and we have a grocery list on our fridge. And you can write down anything you want on that list whenever it pops up in your head. 
Yeah. You just write it down on that list. And then like you said, we have designated days and times that we go to those places. And that's when we'll get the things that you need. Mm -hmm. And we also have like our dry erase calendar. So like we write down like all of our big things for the month that's on there. And if there's something that you need, then you write it in a different color so that mom knows to look at it or that you know to tell me about it. So either way, point is it gives everybody a chance to communicate whatever way they need to verbally, written. There's lots of opportunities to, to say when you need something so you can do that planning ahead. Yeah. And I love the dry erase calendar too. Like we do a dry erase calendar in my kitchen as well. And all of our stuff is written on there for the month. And anytime my kids tell me something's happening, I write it on the dry erase calendar just so they can't, you know, last minute be like, oh my gosh, I have to be at school by 6 a.m. for cheer practice, which happens. And I can be like, did you tell me about this beforehand? Because I have something planned tomorrow morning. So the dry erase calendar really helps eliminate a lot more stop and drops because we know ahead of time what's planned. Right. I'm a huge proponent of calendars. And I think that another big part about having this conversation is making sure you take the time to explain that this isn't to be mean. No, it's not to be mean. It's not to punish anybody. This isn't happening because anybody was being was being mean or to punish them or make them feel the pain. Instead, it's to honor your boundaries and to give you the time to do what you need to get done as well. Mm -hmm. And telling them that it's about boundaries is going to help them understand what boundaries are and then hopefully will help foster them to have their own healthy boundaries as they get older. It's personal preservation. It is. Because it's like the whole cup analogy, like you can't give to others if your cup is empty. Oh, goodness, no. Yeah. Right? So it's protecting your time. It's protecting your sanity when you say no to these stop and drop requests, which brings us to number three, stick to your guns. (laughs) (laughs) And this can become really fun after a while. Like I enjoy being the quote unquote mean parent. Really, I'm not being a mean parent when I do this, but it's like the little persona I like to think I'm being a mean parent. You're the tough tough for boundary holder the boundary Uh. holder especially like it's much easier to do when you say you'll do it beforehand right and you're like no like this is on the calendar and you could just sit back and you could watch your kid throw a fit and they will they might throw a fit and get really emotional and it's like you're watching a show because you expect the show to happen right like it doesn't come at you as a surprise you're like okay this is the first time i'm setting a boundary I'm in for a show. <laughs> right. And if it's too hard for you to be there while it's happening, then you can walk away. Mm-hmm. It's okay. You you can do that. I mean, because honestly, if you're not going to honor your own boundaries, mm-hmm. why should anybody else? Yeah. And that's what your family is going to learn too, right? Is that, okay, well, when mom says that this is the rule, it doesn't really mean it's the rule. Yeah. There's going to be leeway. Mm -hmm. It means like I can like pester mom and needle her until I get what I want. She's eventually going to say yes. So with that being said, bear in mind that if you're going to start doing this, stopping the stop and drop, which we both highly advise doing because your own sanity is so important and your own mental health self-care as well. But there's going to be pushback. So if oh, you're, yeah. yeah. And there'll still be pushback, but it's so much fun like when there's pushback and you really get the hang of it. Yeah. So like you're going to, I want you to embrace the fun that comes with this because just last night I had to stick to a boundary. We have this thing called treat yourself. Oh, I love your treat yourself. The treat yourself. It's from Parks and Recreation if you have not seen that episode. But It's like getting a treat. It's like going to Dairy Queen or Culver's and usually involves ice cream or it could involve crumble with their cookies. Mm. Like if you've never had a crumble cookie. Oh my gosh. So, so good. But my daughter asks for treat yourself all the time, as does my son. And last night I came home from a trip. I was exhausted. I just wanted to go to bed because I was coming in from the East Coast. And my daughter's like, treat yourself. And I'm like, Just looking to embrace the fun. I'm like, yeah, yeah, treat yourself. There's some broccoli in the fridge. Oh, (laughs) that would be a great treat. And she's like, treat yourself. I'm like, it's crunchy. It's green. Oh, my gosh. When I bite that broccoli, it is amazing. She's like, treat yourself. Yeah, I'm going with broccoli here. And then my husband, like across the table, he's like, yeah, I'm going with broccoli, too. (laughs) Oh, my God. But it's like you just kind of having fun with it and Pushing, giving back that push in that hard time, especially because you can't treat yourself every night. You can't. But I mean, like, again, like, 
when it comes back to these boundary things, like we really are giving our children a gift because think about it. Do you Mm -hmm. really want your children to continue on in their life thinking that the world is going to accommodate them? Mm -mm. Because it is going to be a very scary. I mean, we all know as adults that the world doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. And it is going to be a scary situation when they figure out that not everybody's going to stop and drop everything for them. Yeah. I also like to sing the Megan Trainer song too. Oh, when my, I have my name my is sign, no, no, my, my sign, sign is no. no. You got to let it go. You got to let it go. <laughs> so I'm gonna add that one to the no get oh, mom playlist. You got to let it go. Yeah, it's really it's really fun to say to kids, especially when they ask you again and again, and yeah, you just start singing at them, and they'll be like, uh. <laughs> Your kids are like, and you're weird, and they just walk away, and then threaten to do it in public, and that's like, <laughs> oh, I know, right? Like, yeah, I'm like, I'm gonna sing this song around your friends. <laughs> but it's my just, daughter, no wonder she runs away from me. <laughs> it's the fun. It's the fun. Like, we gotta have fun, else we would cry. Right. Sometimes this job of parenting is pretty hard, and you just have to look for the funny in the situation. It is so okay. So who out there is ready to join us in stopping and putting an end to the stop and drop? No more stop and drop. No more. Down with stop and drop. It's like holding those signs like the Minions in the Minions movie. Like, oh, gosh. Yeah. Down with stop and drop. I'm going to see if I can make that graphic. I'm down not sure with that stop and drop. Yeah. <laughs> so what are the three things they're going to do to stop or end the stop and drop? So schedule time in your calendar for the things that pop up or like the things that you know always happen, like the Target and the grocery run. Right. And then let your family know before that you're going to stop doing it, why it's happening, and that it's honoring boundaries. Mm -hmm. And also, you want to have that conversation in a time that they don't ask for something. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right when they're asking for it is probably not the time they're going to be the most open to the discussion. Mm -hmm. I like to bring these up at the dinner table or a family meeting time. Yeah. Those are great times to bring it up. And then third, stick to your guns and honor that boundary. Yes. Because if you don't honor your boundaries... Who's going to honor your boundaries? And if you need help, channel Megan Trainer. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's what I, I do all the that. time. I do all the time. So uh, remember, the best mom is a happy mom. Take care of you, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks for stopping by. Are you looking for something to listen to with your whole family? Then check out Six Minutes, produced and created by Gen Z Media. With over 200 twisty, cliffhanger-filled episodes, Six Minutes tells the story of 11-year-old Holiday who is pulled from the icy waters with no memory of who she is or where she came from. Three years ago, Brindley Pasternak helped the Anders family uncover the truth about Holiday's past. Now she'll need them to help her find the truth about hers. In Six Minutes Out of Time, the long-awaited sequel, Cyrus Anders is found unconscious near the mysterious Elixir Academy in Florida, and Brindley learns the school may have a shocking connection to her missing mother. Dive in now and get the most downloaded family audio adventure in history. Follow Six Minutes wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen early and ad-free with the GZM family subscription.